It's actually one of the most famous philosophical puzzles from ancient Greece, Zeno's paradoxes. Zeno of Elea, living around 490 BC, crafted these paradoxes to back up his teacher Parmenides' philosophy. Parmenides believed that reality is singular and unchanging despite what our senses tell us. Zeno's paradoxes challenge our understanding of motion, space and time by suggesting they lead to some pretty wild contradictions. The Achilles paradox is a classic. Imagine this, the mighty Achilles races against a tortoise. The tortoise gets a head start. Now, every time Achilles reaches the spot where the tortoise was, the tortoise has moved a little further ahead. Since this process can be infinitely subdivided, Zeno argues that Achilles would need an infinite number of steps to catch up, so he never does. Mind-blowing, right? But Zeno didn't stop there. He created around 40 paradoxes, many of which we only know about through the writings of Plato, Aristotle and later philosophers. These paradoxes argue against the idea that there are multiple existences or that motion and change are coherent concepts. Now, why do these paradoxes matter? Well, they've sparked centuries of philosophical and mathematical debate. Aristotle tried to tackle the Achilles paradox by suggesting the concept of potential infinity, that the steps can be infinitely divided in theory, but not in practice. Fast forward to modern times and we've got calculus. Calculus provides a new perspective by handling the infinite subdivisions Zeno talked about. It shows us that even though there are infinitely many steps, the total distance and time can still be finite. So why should you care? Aristotle attempted to address some of these paradoxes, though popular literature often misrepresents Zeno's arguments. Contrary to common belief, Zeno did not argue that the sum of an infinite series is infinite, but rather questioned the feasibility of completing an infinite number of tasks within a finite time. For example, Simplicius quotes Zeno saying it is impossible to traverse an infinite number of things in a finite time. First up, the paradox posits that before reaching a goal, one must reach the halfway point and before that a quarter of the way and so on ad infinitum. This infinite sequence implies that motion cannot even begin making travel over any finite distance impossible, thus suggesting motion is an illusion. Next we have, in this scenario Achilles can never overtake a tortoise with a head start, as Achilles must first reach the tortoise's starting point. By then, the tortoise has moved further ahead, creating an endless sequence where Achilles can never catch up. Although this paradox is similar to the dichotomy, it does not conclude with the impossibility of motion. Then Zeno argues that if an arrow is observed at a single instant in time, it appears motionless since it occupies a space equal to itself. If it is motionless at every instant and time is composed of such instants, motion is impossible. This paradox divides time into points rather than segments, emphasizing the contradiction in the concept of motion. Moving on to other paradoxes, if everything has a place, then place itself must have a place leading to an infinite regress. Another intriguing one is the a single grain makes no sound upon falling, yet a thousand grains do, implying a thousand nothings become something. Aristotle responded that even inaudible sounds contribute to an audible sound. Finally, this one is quite a head scratcher. Two rows of bodies moving in opposite directions result in the conclusion that half a given time is equal to double that time. This paradox, alongside the paradox of Achilles and the tortoise, questions the concepts of discrete and infinitely divisible space and time. Now, let's explore the proposed solutions that have emerged over centuries to address these ancient puzzles. According to Simplicius, Diogenes the Cynic had a simple yet profound response to Zeno's arguments. He stood up and walked, demonstrating the falsity of Zeno's conclusions through action. However, to fully solve any of the paradoxes, one must delve deeper and identify the flaws in Zeno's reasoning, not just the conclusions. Throughout history, several solutions have been proposed. Aristotle was among the earliest to tackle these paradoxes. He remarked that as the distance decreases, the time needed to cover those distances also decreases, making the required time increasingly small. Aristotle also distinguished between things infinite in divisibility, such as a unit of space that can be mentally divided into ever smaller units, and things infinite in extension. Addressing the arrow paradox, 
Aristotle argued that time is not composed of indivisible nows any more than any other magnitude is composed of indivisibles. Thomas Aquinas echoed this, stating that instants are not parts of time, just as points are not parts of a magnitude. Some mathematicians and historians, such as Carl Boyer, view Zeno's paradoxes as mathematical problems. Modern calculus, with the epsilon delta definition of limits developed by Weierstrass and Cauchy, provides a rigorous formulation that resolves the mathematics involving infinite processes. However, some philosophers argue that Zeno's paradoxes remain relevant metaphysical problems. They contend that while mathematics can calculate where and when Achilles will overtake the tortoise, it does not address the central philosophical issues raised by Zeno. For instance, Kevin Brown and Francis Moorcroft argue that solving the mathematical issues does not fully resolve the paradoxes. Brown suggests that Zeno's arguments on motion will always serve as a profound reflection of our most fundamental phenomenological concerns. Another proposed solution questions one of Zeno's key assumptions, that between any two different points in space or time there is always another point. Without this assumption, there are only a finite number of distances between two points, resolving the paradox. However, Hermann Weyl pointed out a further problem with this assumption, known as the tile argument or distance function problem. According to this argument, the length of the hypotenuse of a right-angled triangle in discretized space is equal to the length of one of the sides contradicting geometry. Jean-Paul van Bendegem has argued that the tile argument can be resolved, suggesting that discretization can indeed remove the paradox. As we continue our journey through the labyrinth of Zeno's paradoxes, let's explore how these ancient puzzles have found intriguing applications in modern science and technology. In 1977, physicists E. C. George Sudarshan and B. Misra discovered a phenomenon that brings Zeno's paradoxes into the realm of quantum mechanics. This phenomenon, known as the quantum Zeno effect, posits that the dynamical evolution or motion of a quantum system can be hindered or even inhibited through continuous observation. This effect is strikingly reminiscent of Zeno's arrow paradox, where the arrow appears frozen in time at every instant of its flight. Interestingly, the quantum Zeno effect was first theorized in 1958, long before it was experimentally observed. This effect has profound implications for our understanding of quantum systems and the nature of reality itself. It suggests that simply observing a system can alter its state, a concept that challenges our classical notions of motion and change. But the influence of Zeno's paradoxes doesn't end there. In the field of verification and design of timed and hybrid systems, the term Zeno behavior is used to describe a system that includes an infinite number of discrete steps within a finite amount of time. In practical terms, this means the system is theoretically caught in an endless loop of actions in a finite time span. To manage these paradoxical behaviours, some formal verification techniques explicitly exclude Zeno behaviours from analysis. This is because such behaviours are not equivalent to non-Zeno behaviours and can complicate the verification process. Similarly, in systems design, Zeno behaviors are often excluded from system models since they cannot be implemented with a digital controller. The interplay between Zeno's ancient philosophical puzzles and cutting-edge scientific research highlights the enduring relevance of these paradoxes. They continue to inspire new ways of thinking about motion, time, and the very fabric of reality. 